Welcome people to Real Stories UK. Today we're going to be talking about Marvin Herbert. Marvin Herbert is an ex-gangster from London, but more from the Camden part of London, which is classed as the northwest side of London. Marvin was originally born in Liverpool in the Facet Lee Hospital in 1972. His dad was Bayesian and his mum, who was raised in Croxteth in Liverpool, was from an Irish and Scottish family. Marvin grew up as a normal kid, but England in the 70s was a very racist time and Marvin being mixed race had to deal with regular racism from a young age. After some time, his parents decided to move down to London, which was a very exciting time for Marvin and his family. Marvin and his family first moved to the Chalk Hill estate in Wembley. At the young age of eight, Marvin was caught shoplifting and was taken home by the store's detective to his dad. His dad hit him in front of the store detective at the front door, dragged him into the kitchen and held his hand over the cooker and burnt his hand on the fire. He then beat him with a belt for stealing. Marvin couldn't understand why his dad was doing this to him and from that moment, he lost a lot of love for his dad. Growing up seeing his dad buy and sell stolen things from their home, he didn't really see what was wrong in what he was doing and at the time, he was only eight years old. The man's knocked on the door, he's gone, oh, we caught your son shoplifting, um, we don't want to do it again, we'll phone the police. My dad's punched me in the face, dragged me in the house, the geezer's even gone, oh mate, mate, calm down, calm down, and I remember him saying, calm down, calm down. My dad's then got rid of the store detectives, and then he's dragged me down the f***ing passageway, and he dragged me into the kitchen and just turned on the f***ing fire, the gas fire, and then just burnt my hand. Like, and I'm thinking, I love you, you love me, why are you burning my hand? Like, what are you doing? Like, why, Dad, Dad, please, please, please. In my head, I'm screaming, screaming, screaming. Physically, I'm screaming, please, Dad, please. And he's burning, I can smell it, you can see it. And I'm thinking, wow. And then he beat me with a belt, and then he took me back into the kitchen and made me eat two massive spoons of Econa hot pepper sauce and told me if I ever fever again, I'll be getting twice as much. And I went in my bedroom that night and I cried and I sobbed and I thought, why would my dad do that to me? Like, why would my dad do that to me? Like, why would you do that to me? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, you can't, you, right, f***ing show you, I'll show you. And that was it, from that point, I just, I had no respect for anybody after that point. Like, and it was just, I'm never gonna be like you. I'm never gonna listen to you. I'm never gonna do what you want. You're never gonna hurt me. And that was uh, eight years of age. Marvin found it hard to fit in, being an outsider fresh from Liverpool. He soon found a comfort in fighting, which gained him respect from the other kids. From a young age, he wasn't scared to fight kids his age or even fight the older kids. Being mixed race in a racist London at the time, Marvin couldn't understand why people would treat him different and not accept him because of the color of his skin. And Marvin's release for this was fighting. Marvin soon started smoking weed at the age of 11. And by the age of 13, Marvin soon realized that his dad was a big figure with a whole importation and distribution of cannabis at the time. Obviously, I know my dad, my, I've seen my dad in my house. They're, 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 there's, there's mounds of money. There's mounds of drugs. There's 20, 30 people in my house doing packaging up gear, packaging up money. Like these are things I see as a baby, right? So I know everyone's crooked. I know my dad's dodgy. I've seen guns in my ass. Like we're not stupid, we know. I know my dad's no good. And my mum's always high. Like I used to go shopping with my mum and I used to put clothes on, put jackets on. My mum used to say, wait outside with this. Like look, fill up a bag and it's all right, go and wait outside with me. I'll be out in a minute. Like, and you know what they're doing. And I just thought everyone done this shoplifting and thieving shit. He would see crates of cannabis being delivered to his house. So he soon started taking carrier bags of weed for him and his friends to smoke and sell. And due to this, his dad would accuse his mum of stealing the cannabis and he would beat her for the missing weed. One day, Marvin was upstairs in his house with his friends when he heard his dad arguing with his mum and getting violent about some cannabis which had gone missing. Marvin turned to his friends and told them to help him get his dad away from his mum and get him out of the house. After all, this is happening for the weed they're all selling. Marvin's dad was six foot three and very well known on the streets. So his friends were reluctant, but they agreed. Marvin then went downstairs, burst into the kitchen. His friends changed their mind and chose to stay out of the way. Marvin pointed the bayonet at his dad. He told him to never come back to the house again. He told him that he was the one who'd been taking the weed over the past years. His dad backed up and left. Marvin, knowing how violent his dad could be, thought that he has to make sure that his dad understands that he can never come back to the house again. Marvin, 14 at the time, decided to get a car. Marvin only knew how to use first and second gear, so he couldn't drive long distances. So he asked one of his friends if he would drive him to Wilsdon in Northwest London. His friends tried to talk him out of it, but Marvin made up his mind. Marvin and his friends took the drive down to Wilsdon and he walked into a pub where he knew his dad would be. When he walked in, he saw his dad playing Kaluki with some friends. Marvin's dad said, you alright son? Marvin then stepped to the side, pulled out a gun and pointed it at his dad. He said, no, I'm not alright dad. 
One of Marvin's dad's friends tried to say something. Marvin turned the gun on him and told him, say one more word and I'll blow your head off. Marvin then turned the gun back on his dad. His dad said, please son. Marvin told him, don't never come back to the house. Marvin's dad agreed and Marvin left the pub that day. As time went on, Marvin started getting more and more involved in robberies, stealing car stereos, car parts, hubcaps, and even whole cars and selling them for cash. Certain times, Marvin and his friends would be getting so many car stereos on a regular basis that the guy wasn't able to pay for all of them with cash. So sometimes, instead of giving Marvin cash for the car parts, he would give him drugs to sell. Marvin wasn't a drug dealer, so he would give the drugs to people he knew who sold drugs and he would get his money that way. He then learned that a lot of money could be made from selling drugs. As the years went on, Marvin got more and more involved in the criminal lifestyle, making large amounts of money. Marvin knew he couldn't put this money into a bank, so he would invest in kilos of cannabis, cocaine and guns and he would give these things to the drug dealers he knew and he would make his money that way. Marvin was arrested for some brand new Mac-10 machine guns, silencers and walkie-talkies and he was told by a solicitor as he sat in Belmarsh prison that he should expect no less than 36 years on a guilty verdict. After taking the case to trial, the other charges for the firearms were dropped and he was sentenced to five and a half years for guilty by association for one of the firearms which his co-defendant pleaded guilty to. Over the years, Marvin has been under investigation for 19 murders, several attempted murders and robberies. Not long after being released from prison in April 2006, Marvin decided to move to Spain to make money. Already having strong connections in the criminal underworld out there, he jumped on a plane and left the UK. While out there, Marvin was used as security for large-scale drug deals and started making money that way. One of Marvin's friends told him that he should get into debt collection as there's a lot of money in that field out there. Doing other bits and bobs as well, Marvin had a driver while in Spain. On one occasion, while at another one of his friend's homes, his friend was showing Marvin some expensive watches and asked Marvin if he wanted to buy one. Marvin already had a lot of watches, so he declined, but his driver said that he would take one. Marvin vouched for his driver, so his friend gave the driver the watch and he agreed to pay for it at a later date. After some time had passed, while out and about, Marvin received a phone call from his friend asking him what's going on and when the watch is going to be paid for. Marvin was confused and couldn't understand how he still hadn't been paying for the watch. Feeling disrespected, Marvin told his friend he's going to sort it out. He then called the driver and asked him what's going on and why he ain't paid for the watch. The driver was rude and told Marvin it's got nothing to do with you. Marvin then asked him where he is and made his way there. After arriving at the location, the driver wasn't there but his friend was. Marvin asked him where the driver is and he said he left, he'll be back soon. Marvin knew that he'd most likely gone to go get a weapon, but he said, cool, I'll stay and wait for him to come back. After some time, the driver returned to the bar. Marvin approached him and told him to walk up the street away from the customers, which is when he lifted up his top and showed the gun on his waist. Marvin, still not afraid, told him do what you came here to do then, while thinking he just needs to get close enough to grab the gun off the driver, not thinking the driver would shoot him. Marvin was then shot in his leg, which shattered his bone in 200 pieces. He was then shot in his arm and then shot in his testicles. The driver then walked away and then turned back to finish the job and shot Marvin twice in the head. One of the shots was in his right eye. Marvin then called his own ambulance and he had to call several times because they kept hanging up on him because each time they thought it was a prank when he told them how many times he'd been shot and where. He was eventually picked up and taken to the hospital but he wasn't treated as a victim, he was treated as a suspect. His home was raided and all of his family and friends were arrested. After several surgeries, Marvin was told that he won't ever be able to walk on that leg again and he was on constant morphine while at the hospital. One night, while asleep, Marvin said that he heard a voice which told him that if he gets off the morphine and gets his body healthy again, he will be able to walk again in two and a half years. This whole process helped Marvin to get familiar with the foods and vitamins he needed to get his body and bones strong again, eventually eating a fully plant-based diet. The driver eventually handed himself into police with a prepared statement saying that Marvin was a well-known hitman from London and that he came to kill him and that he took the gun off Marvin and shot him five times out of fear. He was sentenced and has since been released from prison. After being shot, Marvin was still in a criminal lifestyle and was selling cannabis while still living in Marbella in Spain. After some time, Marvin moved back to the UK but he was still attached to the criminal underworld. Marvin is a very well known figure in London, especially in Camden and one of the youngsters who sold drugs in the area racked up a debt of over 100 grand and Marvin found this out and gave the boy an ultimatum. He told the boy he's stepping away from the street life so either the boy stops selling drugs today and steps away with him or he's going to sell the debt to one of his pals and from there it's going to get messy. The boy agreed with Marvin and soon decided to start his own record label called Buzzwell who are now a very well known company within the music industry with artists such as Ambush and SP Montez who rack up millions of views on their music videos. Marvin now talks about his life situations and the bad choices he made and what he went through in videos on YouTube and he also talks to the youth to help them stay on the right track because all that comes with the street life is losing years of your life to prison or ending up dead and for what as Marvin would say. Anyone that's been through what Marvin has been through and still managed to change their life around is a blessing. For the latest in urban news and stories subscribe, hit that thumbs up Hit that notification bell and stay tuned into Real Stories UK.